Ann Winslet. I'm a professor in the Department of Computer Science at the University of Illinois. And today we're at the Advanced Digital Sciences Center in Singapore, and I'm talking to Jane Wu, who's a research scientist there. Um, so our topic is video cutout. So what is video cutout? Okay, so uh, simply put, uh, video cutout is uh, basically to extract the foreground layers from the given uh, video uh, any videos, and then you can uh, separate the foreground and the background, and then use only the foreground uh, that has been cut out. So in this video that we're making today, what would the foreground be, and what's the background? So I guess in this case, uh, you and me will be the foreground, and everything left over will be the considered as a background. Okay, I get it. So you're saying that um, a video cutout involves going around the edge of you and then taking out the whole background and putting in some other background. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, so when I look at you, I don't even notice the background. Mm -hmm. So how can it be hard for a computer to remove the background? Okay, so this computer is not as intelligent as a human because a human has been trying to do all these uh, change things. Uh, I mean, so they can interpret this uh, in their brains, and but computer really need an intelligent algorithm to be able to see the object he really like to follow, and also more importantly, I guess in that case, in this case, the for a background could be any uh, irrelevant, uh, distracting events, and uh, that make it very hard. So what kind of things are irrelevant and distracting? For instance, someone is passing by in the background, or you use some, some guy drop a stuff or dust bin over here for whatever this purpose. And also, sometimes the uh, humans, the subject of interest, will have these really uh, dramatic these changes in terms of the scale and also this uh, photometric, this color variations. So, for example, if we were moving around back and forth, or um, if there's a whole bunch of stuff in the background, which today we don't have, we just have the wall, or if there's things moving in the background, all of that makes it a lot harder. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Well, um, when my daughter was in preschool, we used to watch this show called Blue's Clues, where there's a narrator, Steve, and he's cut out from the real world and put into this animated world. Mm -hmm. So doesn't that mean that we already know how to do this cut out? Right. To some extent, I think that the uh, computer, this uh, uh, photograph knows how to generate this effect. But actually, remember that's a, such a constraint. You have to have this so-called blue screen or green screen in general. So it enable you to a uh, good job. So for instance, take the difference uh, for the uh, chromulence channels. Okay, so um, then what's the state of the art now in terms of video cutout without a blue screen or a green screen? Okay, that's a, a good question. I, I mean, so uh, researchers have dreamed to have this uh, functionality, in, uh, but the, really the challenge uh, they are facing now, one is a real-time processing, because you do want the live video to be processed in real-time and also at a high resolution, as much as po as high as possible, and uh, this is at the computing side. So if we look at the solution or algorithm, the quality usually is not quite there, because especially in uh, in the event that the background is quite cluttered and also quite some uh, distracting events that are going on. So I think that's pretty hard, and uh, so we do see some. Uh, kind of uh, good solutions, but they do require kind of uh, very complex these setups like a stereo cameras and also the depth cameras. Remember, the stereo cameras will even complicate the real time this processing. Okay, so if I understand correctly, people can do video cutout, but if they don't have a blue screen or green screen, either it's too slow and can't keep up with uh, the real time video, or it can only do very low res, or the quality is poor, which I assume means we get part of the background yes, indeed. We, that we didn't want, or maybe we lose part of you, yeah. or it requires expensive equipment. Yes. Okay, got it. And so you're saying that you have a solution that is real time, doesn't require blue screen, doesn't require green screen, doesn't require any expensive equipment, and doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. All right, I gotta see this. Let's go uh, down the hall and take a look. Sure. Johan starts by training the system to recognize the foreground and background. First, he moves out of the camera's view so that the system can see what the background looks like. Then the system puts a silhouette on the screen and Johan comes back and aligns himself with that silhouette. Normally, training would end right here, but this time Johan will show on fast forward that he can adjust the height and shape of that silhouette so that no matter how close you are to the web camera or how tall or short you are, you can adjust the shape of the silhouette to fit you more or less. You don't need an exact fit. Now the training is done and on the left you see the actual scene with Jangbo coming into view and standing behind Johan. On the right, Jangbo and the rest of the background are cut out and replaced by the nighttime skyline of Singapore. Johan and Jangbo are moving around and trying to cause trouble for the cutout algorithm, which has to carefully keep track of the exact edge of Johan at all times, his silhouette. When Johan moves around rapidly, he doesn't look anything like that training silhouette. When Jangbo flings himself around, it's just as bad as when Johan is moving. When Johan rocks forward and backward, from the camera's point of view, he's rapidly growing and shrinking, and those scale changes are just as challenging as when he moves from side to side. It's very hard for a cutout algorithm to handle rapid motion. In fact, if you watch carefully, you can catch one mistake. Did you see that quick little flicker? It happened when Johan flung his hand up to the side. Quick movements in the foreground or background impose a heavy computational burden on the cutout algorithm, and in this case, the cutout algorithm thought for a second that it should include Johan's hand in the foreground. Another big challenge is when the boundaries of moving objects in the foreground and background intersect, especially if they have similar appearance. That's why you saw a quick flicker of Jangbo when Johan threw his hand in the air. You only saw a flicker because the cutout algorithm caught up and figured out that Jangbo really was part of the background. Now Johan is going to stand up and back away from the camera, and the cutout algorithm tracks him correctly, even though he doesn't look anything like that training silhouette. You can see a little bit of the actual wall between his elbows and his torso when he keeps his arm close to his sides. Overall, the cutout algorithm does a very good job of distinguishing between the foreground and the background. Cutout is harder with a visually cluttered background because the cutout has to distinguish edges in the foreground from edges in the background. But ADSC's cutout algorithm still works well in this clip which was filmed at an office cubicle with a busy background. Johan is using a plain black backdrop here, which makes the cutout's little mistakes much more obvious than they would be with a more interesting background. Now watch Johan's face on the big monitor as Jangbo rolls the window shade down and then up. The big changes in light levels really alter Johan's appearance and those changes make it hard for cutout algorithms to continue to distinguish the foreground from the background. ADSC's cutout algorithm handles the lighting change as well. Um, Jango, thanks so much for showing that to me. Can you tell me, if we have this video cut out, what can we do with it? Okay, so once we have the uh, good uh, video cut out in real cam on this commodity laptop or desktop, you can use it and for various applications, for instance, you can use it for real can uh conversation or video conference, and so you can drop away this uh, boring background or to just to, for the sake of protect your privacy, and also you can use it to uh, the, your for, uh, any video content as the background, like your slides or your photo items online, to share with your friends while doing this video chat. Uh, in real time, and uh, of course you can also use it for the making the movies and also educational this uh, software. Uh -huh. Okay, so sounds like something that industry would be very interested in licensing. Yeah, we have uh, approached a few companies um, 
So um, for the moment, I think that we have signed a license deal with the Explore technology, and we can use this for to uh, approach like a Q, a Tencent QQ and a QQ uh, Robert, and uh, then I, we have also signed this uh, contract with an agreement agreement with them. Okay, and QQ is the big um, chat provider in China, is that right? Yes, indeed. Okay, well, I can't wait to have it in video Skype. Okay, <laughs> we will try. Okay, thanks very much for talking with me today. Sure.